Rahim, uh, I am very, very happy today to introduce you to uh, Brother uh, David Pitcock. Um, he is uh, another one of those people that's a giant intellectual. And uh, I tell you that these giant intellectuals, uh, we need to take advantage of their knowledge and soak it all in because we don't know how long Allah has them with us. And so um, I'm very, very happy to have you here. Now, a lot of people may not know you, so uh, Brother David, why don't you go ahead and introduce your life? I know you've been, you've been, you've been everywhere. <laughs> you've been in politics, you've been in music, you've been in Islam, you've been outside Islam, you, you've seen it all, and you, you've, you've studied it all. And, uh, and so, um, a small introduction of you, inshallah, and then we will move on to, um, to, to, to the different topics for today, uh, you know, about, we're going to talk about Laylatul Qadr, of course, and uh, you have a very strong opinion that many scholars, including uh, Mufti Muhammad Shafi Rahmatullah Alayhi has, that uh, demonstrates, I mean, his opinion was uh, that Laylatul Qadr is not on one particular day, but rather shifts, uh, and, uh, and I think that's the opinion you hold, kind of, um, and, uh, and then uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the political uh, situation of the world also. And, uh, it, you know, you're one of the people that really understands that, uh, like you said just a few minutes ago, shaitan is at it. Uh, and so, um, okay, bismillah. So please tell us about yourself, you, you know, um, how you learned about Islam, where you were, and then how you came to Islam, and then where you are now. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak to everybody. Um, well, the question begins where where to begin? Well, I think the easiest thing is to do that. Um, I started, um, first of all, mainly in engineering. Uh, but first of all, as a butcher's boy, I was uh, a butcher's boy. So I was in the abattoir and I saw halal slaughter, kosher slaughter and everything else. So from from the age of 15, I, I became into contact with things that don't look necessarily good, but when you understand the science, you realize it's the best thing. Mm -hmm. So moving on from that, at the age of seven, 16, 17, I was doing the working men's clubs uh, that Paul Simon referred to just recently in Manchester. And uh, so we had, uh, uh, I went from that to becoming a semi-professional singer and signing up with EMI and uh, doing records uh, uh, and worked closely with Joe Cocker here in Sheffield where we were both born. And uh, so uh, then I realized that the, the whole thing was a game. You could be guaranteed so many hit singles, but you had to sleep with certain men. Now, for me, I was successful in business, but apart from that, I was repulsed by it. And, uh, just basically at the studio um, where the Beatles were re recording, I got in my E-Type and drove back to Sheffield and that was the end of it. So um, I discovered early on that the whole system is marketing and, uh, and doing things that you wouldn't otherwise do if you were, not, if you were desperate. So anyway, uh, from then I uh, became more immersed in engineering and I was invited to go to Jeddah during mm. Ramadan in 1975. Okay. I didn't know it was Ramadan. I didn't know it was Ramadan, but uh, we couldn't get visas for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, but then eventually we got um, a visa and we, uh, we landed on the first day of Ramadan in 1975. Now mm. we were dressed in Western heavy autumn gear. And of course it was <laughs> 104 degrees and uh, uh, and very humid, so I was ready to get back on a plane, but there wasn't one. So anyway, we were taken to uh, Petromin, the refinery where we had to start work, and we were met by a very delightful Saudi uh, from Medina, whose mm. name was Mansour Sahemi, mm. and he was uh, he was an engineer, really good, and he was laughing, and he apologized for laughing, and he was basically, uh, tears were running down his cheek, and he said, look, he said, I have to explain that we sent out a telex this morning. That was before Skype and all these things. 
Mm. And it said it sent out the telex to UOP in Texas, United Oil Products, that they said the project, the project, Asheville plant project that we'd gone to help with was likely to be held up due to Ramadan. Mm. The incoming telex said, fire Ramadan, get somebody who can do the job. Oh. So, so that's what UOP understood. Anyway, that night we got back into the Red Sea Palace. We tried to get to uh, Sir, but it was the time for Sahur. And so, anyway, behind, um, there was a very deep voice from behind me saying, you guys must be limies. And uh, so I turned around and there's a very, very big uh, black uh, American, African-American with a huge beard like Charlton mm. Heston. And so mm. he explained the problem. He said, look, I'll order extra food. What do you want? Come and join me. So we learned about uh, lots of things I learned about. And we stayed for two nights talking all the way through the weekend. And I learned then about uh, Isa, Mariam, etc. And uh, so I said to my park colleagues who were there, I said, and they kept people get getting up to pray. And I said, if these are the infidels, God help us. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got involved. Now, something very interesting happened. Uh, the next day, a man from Northern Ireland whose father was the head of the prison service, he was running a project for building roads for a, a Saudi company called General Agencies Corporation. And they were having serious problem with asphalt, not adhering, it was breaking up. And he said, I look like losing my job. So she, the Sheikh Camille Wadud, his wife Karima, who was with him, he said, look, write down what the problem is and I'll ask my wife if she can maybe get some inspiration to tell you where to look. So he said, he said, is she a, a civil engineer? He said, no, but we have ways of understanding things. So uh, he gave her the paper. She went and apparently made a stakhara and came back and she said, I'll, I'll show you the papers, but you can't keep them. Anyway, the next morning I had to come back to London and then on to Newark with the sheikh, and, uh, uh, which I did. So I had to then go back and uh, deliver some generators for the, the Foreign Liaison Bureau. Mm. So Mike Mullin met me and he said, that lady, she was absolutely right. How did she know how to solve the problem? Mm. So what was the problem? He said, she said, the problem is in the water. Mm. So I went back the next day, we followed every tanker, finding that they were going to the desalination plant, but mm. three or four were going to the Red Sea and just filling the bowsers up with the Red Sea salty water. And mm. that was causing the reaction. So mm. anyway, that was it. So we said, alhamdulillah, and we solved this problem. Mm. And uh, so that really was the entree into Islam. Mm. Well, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> but it gets even more fantastic uh, uh, later on. But anyway, that I think, without boring the people too much, you know, that's how uh, I got. I realized that there was something in this religion. Uh, when the Sheikh said, Well, uh, we, we always thought we were the good guys <laughs> and you were the bad guys. So I said, No, it's obvious. Who were the good guys? <laughs> <laughs> so. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan Kareem. Now, now I, the, the point may be a good point that you mentioned uh, about uh, Laylatul Qad. Yes, I'm the, very the interested. I've spent present. many years, many years yeah. following the agenda, following the usual belief that Ramadan can be on any of the odd nights, uh, Laylatul Qad can be on any of the odd nights from the 21st through to the 29th. Mm. Now, on all, uh, in 2003, an Egyptian doctor, I was working in Dubai with Professor Uri Tashenko, one of the top Ameri uh, Russian scientists, a brilliant character, and uh, Dr. Samir, he said that he was, he'd been to, uh, uh, to uh, um, Fujairah in the, in the northern part of the Emirates mm. the year before, and uh, the detained photographs, which maybe you can see here now, they may be not brilliantly clear, but this 
this is a standard. Um, can you see that? Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, I can see. This is a standard day. When you take 200, 364 pictures of the year, that is the signal, the digital signal you get from an average sunrise. Now, when the sun uh, on the morning of Leila Tolkad doesn't give off any rays, that's the signal you get. Oh, wow, subhanAllah. Yeah, so no signal, just top hat. So that proves there are no sun rays. And the digital uh, requirements here from the camera. And mm -hmm. then, so the, this was 2003. In 2000, 10 days, so that was 10 days later from the third, we got Layla Thukad at 0641. Now, the, in 2005, I'm in Jeddah, and we're praying Eid the morning, and the night before had been Laylatul Qad. Mm. Right, so the 4th of the 11th, 05. So this I could see from where we were praying. Uh, the sun was rising, and it was weird. There was no, there was no, it was just purple hue, purple haze, like, not like Jimi Hendrix. So, so this then, I would see the sun rising, 0632 mm. and the sun of course is rising still with no discernible rays until finally we have this uh, Le little card picture of this white disc no mm. rays and then finally we get this clear but then it comes to be very 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 white and no rays mm. wow so now, so this this proves that now Leila Tolkad uh, does in fact happen, uh, but it may be as I've said before. Sometimes the Saudis or people may start a day early, so mm. Leila Tolkad would be on a different day or late. But basically, uh, we have to be prepared to look out for it every night, including the night when everybody goes off for. Uh, uh, you know, for the party. Party. Yeah. <laughs> they, <could, laughs> yeah. they should have been doing uh, Tarawiyah. And uh, unfortunately, um, we, we, we weren't. But anyway, this, this I think, um, is, is really... Uh, now, you've got pictures that are clearer than this, but just for, for the sake of tonight... Um, now, why is it important to know other things about this? Is it... Uh, we know that... The Quran was constructed over 23 years. Can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. Now, so that is the number of verses, I believe, right? Yeah, this is the length of the surahs, 114 the verses that way. Right. So uh, over 23 years, the formation of uh, the Quran was this one. Okay, mm -hmm. the red, everything. Yeah, the red, the red is. The right. red, and of course, the long ones here, you can see. Um, this, the longest uh, surah, is actually uh, al Bakr after Al-Fatiha with the final compilation. So that's what it would look like today unless it had been corrected or by the Prophet and the Jibreel alayhi salam. Mm. Now, you can see now the longest and the shortest surah here. And then there can be no mistaking that that doesn't right. spell George Bush. No. You put else for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> or even yeah. Donald Trump. So, subhanAllah, this is engineering done by a CAD engineer. And uh, this is how they formulated that nothing can, this is the imprimatur, this is Allah's signal, this is mm -hmm. the final message. So, well, mashallah, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> right. So, We've got, uh, so that, that's the sort of thing that I'm interested in, is mm. facts. You cannot escape from that. Mm. It's, um, it's, it's black and white uh, and red in places. <laughs> right, uh, right. <laughs> so, so, much uh, so uh, Brother David, so um, I know you are very well aware of the political situation of the world. Mashallah. And so... Um, the average Muslim, you know, he goes to work or now he doesn't go to work, but he's waiting for this pandemic to finish and, you know, go back to work and carry on life like it was before. 
Will things go back to the, the way they were, or are we looking or at a permanent change at this point? I think there is a permanent change, but it will not be in the favor of uh, people like uh, Fauci and uh, what's his name, Bill, uh, and Melinda Gates, who are Satanists. I mean, they're not going to win, as the Quran tells us. Just when they think they have the world under their control, it is taken from them. That is right. what I believe is going to happen. The Mahdi is going to come, and all the signs uh, I've pieced together pretty well, all the Hadith, including the ones that were only discovered in the, in the year 2000, which uh, were in a compilation uh, found in a Turkish uh, library in, uh, in what was Constantinople. Mm. And uh, it, it gives us the full, because um, I've completed the the, the book, uh, my book, uh, Satanic Voices, Ancient and Modern, which was a reply to Salman Rushdie. Now, hmm. that is the that is the cover of the book. Okay, mashallah. Now, yeah. Um, yeah. Chapter the chapter in there, which is is perhaps the most important at this stage, is called Carved Turkey. Oh. Now, the, in the the Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, count six things till Yom al Qiyamat, my death, etc., etc., particularly, and um, that uh, uh, so the 70,000 Jews will take control of Constantinople. Mm. This is in Sahih Muslim and uh, Bukhari. Mm -hmm. uh, so he said, Yom al Qiyamat will not occur to 70,000 sons of Isaac. Will mm. attack, you. but when they come down, they will not fight with arms or shower it with projectiles. Mm. It will simply say La ilaha illallah, right? Not Muhammad, not Muhammad the yeah. Rasulullah, but they will recite it three times. Now, mm. what is important to know is that uh, the people who the seventy thousand sons of Isaac were Masonic Jews from Salonika. Mm -hmm. They were they were all descended from Shabbatai Zavi, who was a false messiah, who tried to uh, take Jerusalem, but the caliph stopped him mm. and ordered him to go back, lose his head, or convert to Islam. Mm -hmm. He, being a coward, he converted to Islam. So he was then banished to Salonika. Now, all the people in Salonika from that day, which became the most Jewish town in Europe, mm. every one of them followed his madham. Now, if you oh. take the Ten Commandments and reverse them, that's what you got. Thou shalt commit adultery. Oh. Now, so that's why you've got people like Netanyahu and all these clowns. They all mm. follow the madham of this uh, uh, evil false messiah. So mm. nobody knew who, like uh, Kamal Ataturk, Javed Bey, Talat Bey, all of them didn't know who their father was. Mm. So they were all illegitimate. So mm. now, um, now this is what happens. Now the British Embassy, and it's in this book, I view everything that I've got, I can validate. Mm. So uh, now, so the British Embassy tell us that on July the 8th, 1908, mm. 70,000 Masonic Jews took control of Constantinople. Oh. Um, right. Now, the prophet says, on from this day, count six years to Jihad Akbar, mm. the Great War. So, July the 8th, count forward six years, July 1914, mm. year in which, in the month in which, Archduke Ferdinand is assassinated in Sarajevo, triggering World War One, Jihad Akbar, mm. in the August of that same year. So spot on. Mm. Exactly. Now, what he then says um, is that then from this day, miss one year. So we miss 1915. The Times History of the War says there was no open revolt in Hejaz in 1915. But in mm. 1916, the prophet says, look for the emergence of Dajjal and revolution entering every Arab house. 
followed by mutual hatred and hostility between the Arabs. Now, right. what happens in July or June of that year, 1916, Lawrence of Arabia arrives mm. in Hejaz. They take control of the Saudis. We give them $20,000 silver dollars a month, and then they start to fight against the Turks. Mm -hmm. And they're ordered by the Prophet, do not fight the Turks, do not fight the Turks, do not fight the Turks. But they want it out of nationalism. So mm -hmm. that's when it all goes Blair-shaped, as we say. And mm -hmm. uh, from then on, it was, uh, it all, it, that's when it all goes horribly wrong. The next year, the Balfour Declaration. Now, but let me go back to 1909, the year after the fall of Constantinople. What's really interesting, and you can see what the agenda is, Tel Aviv is built, created in 1909 in preparation for the State of Israel. Hmm. 1917, the Balfour Declaration, and that's, uh, it's all then cut and dried, and it's all downhill then. And the Muslims hmm. still haven't woken up to the fact that now the Caliph, uh, Abdul Hamid, calls for Jihad Akbar against the British and the Americans hmm. uh, in favor of Germany. Hmm. Germany yeah, so the Muslims were on the side of Germany, and that was one of the, uh, I guess, the re one of the reasons the media had turned against Muslims and Islam, because Germany lost, so Muslims lost. And uh, I, I was a little bit aware of that, but that you've put it into a bigger context of... Uh, well, of the, uh, Ger Germany built yeah. the Baghdad Railway that bypassed the Suez Canal, so all the oil and everything could go overland without having to go through the Suez Canal and pay the, the dues. And, uh, of course, uh, this, the, uh, uh, the people in Sarajevo, uh, they, uh, uh, the Serbs, built uh, the, the, the wall to stop the, the, the railway running. And that's how, uh, basically, Germany uh, lost the war. But they were betrayed from within. And uh, as uh, uh, Lord, uh, General Ludendorff said, if, if they had thought about giving Palestine to the American Jews and the German Jews, they would have done it. But it was the masterstroke of Allied propaganda. We mm -hmm. promised the American Jews and the German Jews Palestine, and everything was undone because no foot had set foot in Germany. So that was the plan, and it's a brilliant plan, but they, they worked to a plan and plan the work. Uh, for 200 years ahead, the British. So the vintage you've got to start planning, not IBM, inshallah, Booker. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so, subhanallah. Okay. So th the Prophet did say that, uh, especially the Arab world, would be like the center of the chaos in a sense. Yeah. Go upon the Arabs for the evil that has come near to them. And we find them uh, basically, you know, getting enveloped with fire now. And they're all against one another. Yes. You know. Well, the problem is hatred between the Arabs. Mutual hatred between the Arabs. And that's what we have because they're, they're away from Islam and they've joined in the, uh, the system of uh, riba, fitna and everything else. And there's no way back. They have to abolish usury, riba. There's no baraka and there's no help unless they change it. So, um, what? Uh, so, so let's talk about riba for a second. Um, yeah. An average Muslim, I would say, especially in the U.S., um, is involved in riba at one level or another. I have brothers who come to me who have two houses on mortgage and the value of the houses in the u.s are dropping so let's say if they bought you know when they financed it they financed it a million dollars but now it's yeah. only worth six hundred thousand and they're even worth wondering if it's worth keeping the second mortgaged house yeah uh, uh do you have any comments I, I i know you're very well read when it comes to riba and and the whole riba system and, and if you can say a few things about that in the context of everything that's going on, and are we looking at an economic collapse of some sort? Uh, this boom and bust? That, sorry to talk over you. Everything no. is planned. No, everything is planned. Uh, the coronavirus and everything. The 1929 crash, 
was uh, was already planned and i've sent you the texas mercury from 1894 yeah. and it shows there that how everything is planned to reduce the the people to penury so they lose their houses and everything and and they then become subservient now uh, there's a brilliant um, american economist um and his name is michael hudson now mm -hmm. this michael is hudson. Book, yeah this is a superb book uh the lost tradition of biblical debt cancellation oh, okay. 2400 bc <coughs> bless you uh, debt was automatically cancelled in the seventh year it mm -hmm. was never allowed to exceed seven years mm. uh, otherwise uh, society melts down the and the motion the mosaic law uh, for, for, from Allah of course they were practicing the same thing they were cancelling or eliminating riba so mm. the most regular if you read uh, the Torah uh, the year of Jubilee uh, is where debt is cancelled slaves are set free etc etc now in uh, in the in the Quran we can see that in Surah Baqarah it tells us better to forgive the debt if you weren't so majnoon Okay, mm. so unless you cancel the debt, uh, there is no hope the, of getting out of the problem. Now, I have here, um, when I went to China, now I was invited to China uh, to address the people who had set up the stock exchange. Mm. Now, this is a very, very valuable little book. Now, it's done by the House Banking Committee. Okay. Right. In 1964, it was at the behest, I'm sure, of John F. Kennedy. Now, mm. money facts, 169 questions and answers. Now, um, let me just put these glasses on. Now, now this is what uh, Thomas Jefferson said. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent. Their fathers conquered. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored mm. to the people to whom it properly belongs. Thomas mm. Jefferson. Okay. Right, this is another very good quote. History records that the money changers have used every form of abuse, intrigue, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling money and its issuance. Mm. Of course, he was assassinated. Right. Andrew course. Jackson. Andrew Jackson. If Congress has the right under the Constitution... Just a sec. Okay. So, something's happened there. If Congress has the right under the Constitution to issue paper money, it was given to them to use themselves, not to be delegated to individuals or corporations. Now, Abraham Lincoln, brilliant. The government should create, issue, and, de and circulate all the currency and credit needed to satisfy the spending power of government and the buying power of consumers. Mm. By the adoption of these principles, the taxpayers will be saved immense sums of interest, Reba. Money will cease to be master and become the servant of humanity. Mm. Now, uh, so, after so I have a question in regards to this. When Muslims are analyzing the global situation, we're usually talking from the perspective of, okay, China is thinking this. The U.S. is thinking this. Britain and the EU are thinking this. What's he thinking? Are they are they independently thinking, or is there like a single entity that kind of controls them? This, the Bank of International Settlements that was formed in 1930. I have all their records till 2016. Mm. Uh, now, what's important? The Bank for International Settlements was set up by the governor of the Bank of England, the head of the American um, banking system. The Reichsbank 
the man who was working for um, uh, in in uh, um, in New York became Hitler's banker. All of them were meeting from 1930 to 31 throughout the war. Now 1939 to 45, they were all meeting, and I've got the accounts showing how much did you spend on armaments bombing us, and then they've debited it up, and so you get your share. How much did you make bombing us in Dresden and killing millions of people, or hundreds of thousands? Mm. And that's how it's been done. It is Hezbo Shaitan, and it is Karun, Ibn Karun, from then till today. So, but now, so by the way, mortgage is a Norman French word. It comes from mort, as in mortuary, mm. and gauge, as in grip. It means death grip. So it's so interesting it, because I was just talking to uh, one of the other brothers that I interviewed from South Africa, Dr. Fays, and he was talking about the word corporation that comes from the word corpse and oration. It's like giving life to something dead because these companies, you know, are, are, are given life and they are represented as, you know, a living entity. And, and, and you're saying something similar about about the word mortgage, death. So, in a sense, yeah. that's interesting. Uh, very interesting. That, oh, one other very important thing. Um, I'm just going to read you. Um, this was done by, by the way, by the, some of the best, most honest bankers in uh, primary. Now, let me just see what he says here. Mm, question number nine. Right, question one. Who has the right to, to create money in the United States? under the Constitution is left entirely to Congress. All right? Then qu qu question number nine. Uh, why, is financial, why is final control of economic policy a problem? Because with an independent Federal Reserve, Congress and the President can be moving in one direction, while the Federal Reserve Board is moving in the opposite one. The Which result is what's happening in the US right now, I think. It's the same scam. For thousands, it's the same game. Shaitan is running the show. And uh, you've got, uh, um, what's his face? Uh, uh, the guy from uh, Goldman Sachs, who was uh, Donald Trump's right-hand man. So, but they are, they are all running the scam. But let me finish this question. The, Federal, the, the result is sometimes no policy at all. At other times, it leads to the Federal Reserve neutralizing the president's economic policies. This possibility caused President Johnson to request the Federal Reserve in 1964 in his annual economic uh, report to Congress not to nullify his efforts to reduce unemployment and raise incomes. Should mm. the president have to ask any government agency to go along with his policy or unapproved by, con by Congress? Obviously not. Now, there's 169 questions and answers that should is already with you and I also mm. when I went to China that these books I took were all translated within three days into Chinese and they gave them to me so the Chinese are very smart and they do understand so mm. now this is what uh, President Woodrow Wilson now Woodrow Wilson at uh, the time uh, he, he had already um, uh, he'd already uh, avoided signing the Ames Bill, but he was forced uh, by powerful people, who we all know who they are now. And this mm -hmm. is what he said. He wrote, I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. Mm -hmm. A great industrial nation is controlled by its system of credit. Our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to be one of the worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the civilized world. No longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by the conviction and vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and duress of a small group of dominant men. Rockefeller, mm. Rothschild, you name it, and Jacob Schiff, who at the same time, Wilson was forced to give Trotsky, who was living in New York, 
with Jacob Schiff with a chauffeur driven limousine, uh, given his passport and uh, the, the big lump of money and sailed with 265 Jews from the Lower East Side of New York to fall the first, form the first Bolshevik government. And that's all in American records. Which are- <coughs> now, uh, now, have you tried to present some of this information to the ulama, to the scholars? Uh, yeah, we went to give evidence to the um, uh, a Sheikh uh, in, uh, in, 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 in uh, Pakistan. And of course, we gave the information. The next headline was uh, in, the, in the paper was that Pakistan to abolish uh, usury. But of course, that came to nothing because right. the usurers are in control. And mm. that's that been the problem with Pakistan. Every so called Muslim Islamic state, including Iran. Now, I've been to Iran and I spoke and wrote directly to Ali Khamenei. And mm. I said, How can you? And that, that day, how can you claim to be an Islamic state when you have a base rate of interest at 32 percent? Is mm. that an Islamic state? If it is, I'll plat sawdust, or as they say. No, mm. now it's 18 percent. But you cannot claim, and that, that's why they're in trouble, because they're at war with Allah and whoever it is, the Israelis, and you name it, who else? So, mm. And the Americans particularly. So. There is no way out unless you abolish interest. If you can fast without food, you can fast without money. But you have to help each other. The Pakistanis used to come to England, collect money, buy a house, no mortgage, and they ended up with with big property holdings. But of course, then they pull them out on interest, renting them out. So uh, there is no future without uh, uh, you abolish interest. No, No possibility of peace or barakah. Right. Um, so, because we also have scholars of Islam who are in Islamic finance, quote unquote, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> and you know they promote the they don't they don't even think about the paper money as uh, a problem. They just go along with it. No, paper and, and paper money is not the problem. Paper okay. money is the solution, providing it is only issued, as Lincoln said, by the state. You don't have then dozens of banks creating money, uh, you know, out of nothing, backed by nothing, and then you end up with a massive collapse. So they should be, all hands should be. When I was in Sudan, for instance, now the head of the Sudan bank, I gave my presentation now uh, to two of them in the uh, it was the bank Faisal, and uh, basically uh, what I told them there, you have Islam, so-called Islamic finance. But you might just as well call it kosher pork, chenzir. Mm-hmm. It is not kosher, and it is no good. And you're in trouble. You've got wars everywhere. There's no baraka. The stupid mm. majnoon. Now, in the big public arena in Khartoum, the hall built by China, I was giving the background information on what we're talking about now, and uh, somebody came up and said they're not translating into Arabic what you're saying. I said, come mm. here, you translate what I'm saying. Now, it was, uh, uh, so when I, when he finally uh, uh, started saying what I was really saying, you could see the hall empty. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so, now, uh, so you can see uh, it's cowardice and the Muslims are their biggest enemy. Mm. They are their own biggest enemy. And when they start complaining, now, Yasser Arafat was there. I said, have you introduced a debt-free system in, in, uh, in Palestine? He mm-hmm. said, no. And, I said, and, he, and he was then trying to feed me with bits and pieces. I said, no. I said, once you actually adopt a, an Islamic proper monetary system, you, uh-huh. Israel will be killed off, dead. Uh, but until they do that, they, they're, they're going nowhere. So that is also... Now, the other thing is, um, the, the hadith I'm talking about, the ones that were recently discovered, 1920, and you mm. saw that interview I did in Dubai. Right, mm. now, Monal Zidane, <coughs> his father was a physician to King Faisal. His mother was an English doctor. And uh, uh, they found and translated the, the latest batch. The one I've just told you about from the fall of Constantinople, all the hadith, 
from then on were hidden. They've been found and we translated them and they're in the compilation that I've sent you. Now everybody's mm -hmm. mentioned in there. After that, Hitler is mentioned. Okay, he'll come to power in 1933. He will be killed by the secret forces of the Russians. Then, well, that which he was. He didn't, he didn't commit suicide. He was murdered by the KGB. Mm. Then Gamal Abdel Nasser would come to power and the Arabs would call him their hero. Mm. But he would lose two wars and he would be abolished. But Allah would will Egypt to have success. And under a black and Adda, Sada with an Anwar, he would win war. But he will com uh, com complete a deal with the the with the Begin. And then he comes all the way up right up to America. America will come out against Al Mahdi and Isa alayhi salam, mm. and Allah will throw down fire and burn their land and the seas and the skies. And that's what people should be getting ready for. It's imminent, I believe, within the next five years. But Allah, I could be wrong. But that's what all this. Talking, and you, will fight talking about a new you will fight Al Assad and you will um, basically. Uh, fight uh, people with black flags and uh, Syria and Iraq will be destroyed and that is when Al-Mahdi will descend and Isa alayhi salam. Now, um, so when you, are you, tr does that mean that there'll be nuclear wars? Well, I don't, may, maybe, but uh, because it, uh, Israel has the biggest private nuclear arsenal, it, could, it has 200 nuclear weapons. Uh, the 9-11 was blown up by two special nukes uh, installed by Israel. I've got the proof of that. And uh, of course, Building 7 was demolished by standard demolition. And I've got the people who did it. So we, we can prove all that. So, but uh, Allah can destroy anywhere as he did with Sodom and Gomorrah, what have you. But Armageddon is scheduled and Judge Wamajud, uh, of course, they will fight it out. But Esau will survive that and the people will follow him to uh, Mount Sinai. Now, what most people don't know is that Mount Sinai is in Arabia. It is not in right. Egypt. Okay, not okay, okay. And I've done that, this. That's important information because uh, <clears throat> that changes where we're looking, in a sense. Correct. Um, now, I've always uh, heard that. And I saw a documentary also talking about how Mount Sinai is actually in Arabia. Yeah. Uh, so, so your opinion is that it is in Arabia? No, I've been there. It's definitely there. Look, oh. if, you look, if you look, just let me show you quickly. Where were the Jews heading for the three-day um, festival? They told Pharaoh they had, in Moses said he had to take his people for a three-day festival. Now, the three-day festival was, in fact, the Hajj. Mm. All that because the Jews have altered the Bible, they've altered everything except when you see how they dress. Um, now, Mount Sinai, that is the, red, the crossing of the Red Sea, is 5,000 feet deep. The, uh, and, uh, but, but the Jews, why do they wear the black phylactery and the black cube on the forehead uh. because it represents the Kaaba and wow. seven straps around the arm of the seven circumambulations around the Kaaba. They were going for Hajj because Musa had already made Hajj because he was living in Midian. He'd married Zipporah and uh, he'd been for Hajj several times because they were on the Hajj trail. And he, he knew exactly where he was going. Now, that is what you see, the Hajj, they're going for. And that is what you see. That's they're wearing on their heads. Seen. Yes, yes, I've seen how that. Many, yes. how, many, how many Muslims know that? <coughs> None. Very, <laughs> very few. So, yeah. I've, been, I've been to Nueva at the Dead Sea Crossing because that's where they cross. Now, for certain it's there because... On either side of the Gulf of Aqaba, Solomon, Suleiman, erects two giant pillars marking mm. the crossing point from Nueva into Arabia. Mm. 
Tamam. God, tamam, yes. So, everything is, is proof. The, the artifacts are there, have been there. Ron Wyatt is, watch his video. Uh, Ron Wyatt is dead now, but I knew him quite well. And uh, he was, was um, one of the most honest people. So, that's what they were going for Hajj. And uh, those, you know, those can't, can't lie. So there's, there's a shock for the Jews. And uh, many of them, I mean, they just run a mile. But because that means, you see, the falsification of the scriptures is that mm. if you put a Bible to hand, if you look at Genesis 16:12, it describes Ishmael, alayhi salam, as a wild humar, a wild donkey of Right, and I've had Christians talk to me about that uh, yeah. in the negative sense, that, oh, but yeah. our Bible says this about you guys. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that because if they read Yado, Bakol, Viad, Kol, Bo, it says Ishmael will be indomitable, stubborn as a mule may be. His hand is in all hands, and all hands are in his. Now that has been falsified. And uh, Jeremiah 8, 8 says, how can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us when the pen of the scribe has made it into a lie? Mm. Boom. Okay, what more do you want than that? The Quran says, ask them why they hide a portion and rewrite right. a portion and say that which they've written is from a lie. It ain't. So we can prove all this. And one of the top Israeli Jewish scholars fluent in Aramaic, fluent in, uh, because Aramaic is the language of the day, Hebrew was just for the scripture. <clears throat> but uh, I've got his handwriting, transcribing what it actually says in in his hand. And mm. he's in London, and I can call him in any time, apart from Friday <laughs> or Saturday. So we've got yeah. the proof. Just get him on there. And, and uh, what does Allah say? Gather your children and their children and call down a curse on which of you is lying. Do that and they'll run a mile. Put them to the test. By the way, have you noticed uh, uh, the, um, the Palestinians are indomitable? I don't know if I've lost you. Okay, so uh, inshallah, a thought for uh, my viewers, inshallah, for now. Um, so we'll end here, and uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Make sure to subscribe today, and make sure you like, and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله